Believe it or not, but the best way to look at how DPS works is to take a look at a timeless classic chess. When you're playing chess, you try to remove all of the pawns and find an angle and a way to access the king and queen. Every Overwatch game is a map that consists of different pieces that hold different areas and create different lines of attack that you have to recognize to win the game. This guide will teach you how to maximize your chance of solving this puzzle, so if you're ready to start really impacting every game as DPS, you should stick around and listen up. Tanks in Overwatch 2 all got a rework, giving them more HP and survivability, and this paired with supports healing them creates an almost unkillable tank. A DPS player that is farming tanks to try and carry fights will have a very bad time <laughs> yeah. carrying games. This is because while the tanks are crazy powerful, there's only one of them. This is crucial to understand why that buffs DPS. This is because there are two DPS, and if the tanks are preoccupied with each other, there will be windows of opportunity where the DPS player can create a play and potentially a game-winning pick. This is where the skill expression, mechanics, and power of DPS comes into play. Not spending their valuable time, cooldowns, and resources shooting at tanks. I highly recommend watching my video, the only video you need to climb in Overwatch 2, as it heavily relies on these concepts, and having them integrated into your core decision-making foundation will help immensely for climbing. Trust me, I've coached GM players who still don't even have these integrated into their systems. There are three types of space. Enemy space, friendly space, and neutral space. It is important to note that space is something that continuously changes based off of where everyone is playing. If the enemy team are positioned on one side of the map, that is their space. Anything outside of their reach is considered neutral space, and anything that your tank and team occupies would be your friendly space. So to decide the best strategy to attack the enemy team, we first need to understand where the enemy's space is. We can see this often by seeing where the tank is holding, and we know that the team will be around or behind that tank. Secondly, the type of tank that you see on the enemy team will dictate where we want to move on the map. If we see, for example, a Zarya on low ground, we know that the high grounds around her will be potentially safe, neutral space. However, just because the Zarya is on low ground, it doesn't mean that the enemy teammates are not. So we go to the high ground, we go to scout it out, we go to see if there's an enemy DPS and or support there contesting us, and if it's free, then we play to set up to take neutral space. If the enemy tank was playing in the same spot, but is now in Winston, that tank can easily jump high ground, meaning that as long as he has that cooldown, pushing that neutral space will be more dangerous. But because we can plan around it, we can take this into account when we go for our engage and peak timing. What makes the King of the Hill game mode so unique is that in the first fight, the entire map is completely neutral territory. Each team will be moving up and taking as much space as fast as they can. This is because they will need as much space as possible to take control of the best areas in each map. These areas usually have a big advantage for whoever gets there first, as it is designed in a way that is hard for the enemy team to push them out of it. As you can see here, Usan Mecha Base has these two tiny chokes that the attacking team will have to move through, which is very difficult to do. In comparison, the defending team has this big, wide open space that they can maneuver between, which is the advantage of getting there first. Each team's composition affects this space differently than others, which is why it will be important to learn your specific character's strengths and styles, as well as a basic understanding of other team compositions. Now, as a general rule of thumb to help you along your way, a Reinhardt, Zarya, Orisa, or Junka Queen composition is more likely to want to hold chokes, play close fights, and these comps' biggest weaknesses are in rotations. So the best way to beat them is to play far away and bait out their resources so that by the time that they make it to you, they have nothing left to fight. Tanks such as Sigma and Rodog are better at playing slow, giving the enemy team space but they try to make it impossible to approach them by looking for picks or absorbing damage. These two picks are countered heavily by being run down by the enemy. Lastly, Eva, Doomfist, Wrecking Ball, and Winston 
are tanks that can be played from almost anywhere as they can use their mobility and crowd control to push people out of friendly space and punish positioning errors really easily. These comps are generally countered by teams that play tight together or have a lot of crowd control. As I am on Tracer, I get to the fight earlier before my team does, and I notice that the enemy team has arrived much earlier than my team. This is because the blue team has a Lucio, which allows them to get to the neutral space more quickly. Instead of forcing a fight by myself, I recognize we will have to play at a disadvantage and prepare to find a way to break it. Now it is very common that the two tanks will match each other. This is very important to note because this is how we know what space to play off of. So I use this information to my advantage by finding where my diva will push and I move to an angle off of my tank. Now this is referred to as an off angle. When I've made sure my tank is distracting the enemy, I make sure I have all of my cooldowns as entering enemy space is very dangerous and I want to minimize the chance of myself dying and throwing the fight away. So I need to make sure my recall is up. When I come into that neutral space, I want to make sure there's no one there to stop me. So when I go around the corner, I'm scouting to check if an enemy DPS is there because if they were shooting at me, I would not be able to push through that choke. Luckily, in this case, the tracer decided to force her own play, which will break down later, leaving the space open and free for me to take. However, I do not want to go in randomly or blindly, but I do want to push up to get as much information as possible to see if somebody is killable. In this case, I see that the enemy support, or Mercy, used her escape ability without a care in the world. And I use the small window to try and burst her down, almost killing her. And killing this Mercy will guarantee that the enemy can no longer sustain my team's assault. And because I almost killed her, I decided to make this decision to commit and finish her off. And to be able to achieve this efficiently, I will be using a tactic that most DPS players do not consider and is absolutely busted. Using my abilities, I maneuver around corners and behind the enemy team. The reason I'm moving behind them is because I'm trying to force them to make a decision. They have to turn around and deal with me, which then loses them a lot of pressure, or they have to go forward and get their own trade kill. This is called creating a crossfire. Anytime you're in the enemy territory and you can make them turn around, it will lead to an incredible amount of pressure if you time it correctly. In this instance, my play has worked and my other DPS finishes off the mercy because he's now free firing with all the pressure, which turned this losing situation into a winning one. Let's take the same fight and look at it from the perspective of the enemy tracer who had the territory and who had the space. As many of you could be making the same mistake without knowing it and solo throwing your games because you're giving the space away. In this instance, her team is winning the map and all she has to do is wait for one of us to try and make her way through the choke and push us back so that we're automatically losing. She's maintaining the advantage. However, she couldn't suppress her DPS temptation, saw some targets, unnecessarily forced the duel into really bad space and then had to recall out, no longer had her cooldowns and now she couldn't stop me from pressuring her team as I had a cooldown advantage. It is super important to recognize as a DPS that we are in control or are winning this space. Instead of forcing plays, we should make up for our tank's weakness by controlling the neutral space that they cannot. So in this instance, the diva is holding left, so she should have controlled right. Some other common DPS mistakes that I see is that when their team has an advantage, such as a pick, they hesitate on taking neutral space. I highly encourage you to limit test what you can do with these new building blocks in mind. If you start to view DPS as a tool that can swing the tides of this space and a role that can express better skill by stopping the enemy DPS from being able to play or getting picks themselves, you will quickly find yourself dominating the ladder while being uncontested. Just remember that if we create a bad engage timing, where the enemy team is not distracted by your team, they have nothing else to look at, so they'll probably look at you and dispatch of you really quickly, which is why the teammate check is crucial for succeeding. What I'm hoping that you draw from this video is that I chose a very difficult map to gain neutral space or to find an opening on with very limited options. It only gets easier the wider and bigger the map is as we get more and more options if there's one thing I want you to take away from this heading into your next rank games is that you cannot improve without losing. You are going to mess up these timings. You are going to go into the wrong space. You're going to encounter things you haven't had to solve before. But by showing you the baseline foundations, I'm hoping that you can take these concepts away, apply them to your gameplay and slowly and surely build on this information to get to that complicated quick problem solving situation. Now that I've helped you out, Help me out. Leave a like, subscribe, 
It means a lot. Love reading through all the comments. As always, feedback is always welcome to improve the quality of these videos and make it better. And for those who are wondering what's coming next, it's going to be banger content that will help you climb. I've been top 10 for years, 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 not during the downtime, during the uptime. I've been in pro play. I've done it all. I think I have a good baseline understanding of how to climb ladder, what to do. And now it is my turn to teach all of you that. Much love, everybody.